Hi Chemistry, this is 8.01, Forces Within Nucleus. Chemical reactions deal with the exchange or sharing of valence electrons. By contrast, nuclear chemistry deals with the changes that occur within the nucleus. In nuclear reactions, atoms can change from one element to another with the absorption or release of often vast amounts of energies in the form of radiation. Our technologies have used these reactions for civil good and for destructive power. In this unit, you will learn about the structure of the nucleus, the forces that hold it together, the types of nuclear reactions, and energy given off when nuclear reactions occur. So again, so far we've only been talking about chemical reactions. Chemical reactions are what you see or even do yourself all day long, and it's just the gaining, losing, or sharing of electrons. If we have a nuclear reaction, now we're dealing with the nucleus. And what is in the nucleus of all atoms? Protons and neutrons. So now we're having the protons and neutrons react, and we're actually creating not only a new substance, but more importantly, a new element. Forces within the nucleus. The nucleus of the atom is composed of particles. Most chemical reactions that you have studied deal with the exchange or sharing of valence electrons. By contrast, nuclear chemistry deals with the changes within the nucleus. Nuclear reactions can actually change an atom of one element into an atom of another. In this lesson, you will learn about the structure of the nucleus, including the particles that make up protons and neutrons, as well as the forces that hold the nucleus together. So here are the goals. Explain the differences between nuclear reactions and chemical reactions. Identify the forces that hold protons and neutrons together in the nucleus of an atom. And identify quarks as the particles of matter that make up protons and neutrons. So in every atom we have the nucleus. Inside the nucleus we have neutrons and protons. But neutrons and protons are actually composed of something smaller called quarks. And then we have the study guide, which you can go ahead and open. So this is what I added to my notes. I added our title that we're doing 8.01 forces within the nucleus. And I also put this note on here to remind us that chemical reactions involve the sharing, gaining, or losing of electrons. These are everyday processes which create new substances but still have the original elements. Remember when we had a balanced chemical equations? We had to have three hydrogens on the right, three hydrogens on the left. We had to have five coppers on the right, five coppers on the left. Okay? Even though we rearranged it and made new substances, we still had the original elements. Nuclear reactions, on the other hand, involve the nucleus and they create new elements. From the study guide, I copy-pasted the keywords and pronunciation, nuclear chemistry, a branch of science that deals with the structure of and changes in the atomic nucleus, the quark is a fundamental subatomic particle that composes protons and neutrons. In other words, it's what makes up protons and neutrons. Theoretically, six types of quarks exist, and their existence has been demonstrated experimentally. And there's also the strong nuclear force. It's a fundamental force that holds quarks together in the nucleus of an atom. So remember, in the nucleus, we have positive protons and neutral neutrons. Well, all those positives do positives want to stick together? No, positives and negatives are attractive. So the reason those positives are forced to stay together in the nucleus has to do with what we call the strong nuclear force. I know, exciting name, right? Strong nuclear force helps keep the quarks together, which holds the nucleus together. And then again, the goals. So differences between nuclear reactions and chemical reactions. Identify the forces that hold protons and neutrons together in the nucleus of an atom. And identify quarks as the items that make up protons and neutrons. So what is nuclear chemistry? The chemistry that you have studied so far has involved the reactions between elements and compounds where one atom or group of atoms exchanges or shares valence electrons with another atom. Remember, valence electron means outer electrons. In nuclear chemistry, you will study the composition and changes of the nucleus of the atom. Nuclear chemistry began in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, as scientists discovered radioactivity and the subatomic particles that make up the nucleus. 
These scientists include Ernest Rutherford, Henry Becquer, yeah, I can't say his name. Honestly, off the top of my head, I can't even tell you what he did. Um, Pierre and Marie Curie and James Chadwick. In studying radioacti radioactive atoms, they found that the nucleus itself could undergo change. And so Madame Curie is probably a person that you have heard of before. And Chadwick and Rutherford also helped with the nucleus and just kind of gives you the timeline of when these things were going on. And of course, Madame Curie got a Nobel Prize for her work. Okay, so I had a quick look up Henri or Henry because I felt kind of bad for not knowing him, but apparently he worked with the Curies and also got a Nobel Prize with them. So there we go. We all learned something today. Maybe if you're on Jeopardy someday and you like win a million dollars because you knew that guy, feel free to like, you know, send me a couple hundred dollars out of your millions. Hehe. <laughs> Nuclear reactions change the composition of an atom's nucleus. For example, 92 U. Okay, so let's stop and just say what that is. So U stands for uranium. 92 is the atomic number. And the 238 is the mass number. And they write it that way because when you have different isotopes or atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons, you'll have different mass numbers, and that ends up playing an important part, especially with radioactivity. All right, so for example, 92238 uranium is an isotope of uranium that has an atomic number of 92. And remember, all uranium atoms have an atomic number of 92. That means they have 92 what? Protons and a mass number of 238. So if you add the protons and the neutrons, you get 238. It is an isotope of uranium with 92 protons, 146 neutrons. In a nuclear reaction, the composition of the nucleus actually changes. For example, the isotope uranium-238 will change into the isotope thorium-234 by emitting two protons and two neutrons, or in other words, a helium atom, from its own nucleus. So let's stop and just look at the picture. So we have uranium, and basically this is just the nucleus. Okay, it's crazy big for an atom. And which, of course, as we know, is actually insanely small, but for an atom, it's very big. And what happens is this helium pops up. So helium has two protons, and now since uranium has two less protons, it's no longer uranium. It is now element number 90, which is thorium. Thus, uranium becomes a totally different element. This happens in a nuclear reaction, but not in a chemical reaction. So chemical reactions, remember, we spent a couple weeks balancing chemical equations where you have to have the same number of each element before and after. Not true for nuclear reactions. Nuclear reactions, you are changing stuff into a different element. And this is what the chemical equation looks like. So see, we have uranium on the left side as our reactant, and our products are thorium plus helium. And a reminder about isotopes. Remember, isotopes of an element are atoms that have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. Okay, so let's add some stuff to our notes. So I added the word isotopes to our keywords and pronunciations. Isotopes of an element are atoms that have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. And then I put down here, nuclear reactions change the composition of an atom's nucleus. Uranium lost two protons, which is the same as saying that it lost a helium atom and it was changed into thorium. Again, feel free to hit pause and copy my notes into your own. The nucleus of an atom is made up of protons and neutrons. For centuries, scientists thought that the atom was the smallest particle in the natural world. In fact, the Greek meaning of the word atom is indivisible, but the atom was not the smallest particle at all. Ernest Rutherford discovered that almost the entire mass of the atom is in its nucleus. Yet the volume of the nucleus is extremely small compared to the rest of the atom. In other words, it's really heavy in the center, 
but the center is just a little part of the entire atom. Okay, so if you look at this, I mean, the nucleus only makes up about one, probably about one-eighth of this total atom. Okay, so size-wise, it's pretty small compared to the rest of the atom, but that's where all the mass is. Rutherford later discovered that the first nuclear particle, the proton, the proton had a charge of plus one. Later, James Chadwick discovered the other nuclear particle called the neutron. He found that the neutron had about the same mass as a proton, but was not charged. The atom, a particle, is itself composed of even smaller particles. So I added those two scientists to our notes. Rutherford discovered that the proton, discovered the proton, sorry, and that the nucleus makes up a small part of the atom, but it is where most of the atom's mass is. And also Chadwick discovered the neutron, which I always thought was kind of impressive considering it's not positive or negative. The like charges of protons repel each other, causing the atomic nucleus to come apart. Imagine that you have two bar magnets. If you place the north pole of one next to the north pole of the other, what happens? The magnets repel each other. Electronically charged, sorry, electrically charged particles work the same way. Similarly, the nucleus of an atom contains positively charged protons. Because like charges repel, the protons should move away from each other and the nucleus should fly apart. So that's what our first picture is saying. Two positives don't want to be together, they should fly apart. But why doesn't this happen? First, neutrons create a buffer that offset the repelling interactions of protons. So it's not just protons, but there's neutrons. So the protons are like, okay, I still don't want to be by you, but not as bad as when it was just us by ourselves. Second, as you will see, another force inside the nucleus is working to hold the protons together. All right, so I'm actually just going to copy paste that and put that in our notes. Again, feel free to add what I'm adding, or you can shorten it or add your own information as well. Protons and neutrons are made up of particles that are smaller still, quarks. And this picture is trails left by subatomic particles. So they did experiments, and these are the trails that the subatomic particles left. Protons and neutrons are together called nucleons. All right, so let's add that right away into our vocab. We're going to put that back up on top. Nucleons equal protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are together called nucleons, and they have been found to be composed of even smaller particles. The discovery was made by way of a particle collider or atom smasher. A particle collider is a particle accelerator with two opposite beams of particles. The particles are accelerated to extremely high kinetic energy. Those particles hit other particles, and the scientists observed the resulting reaction. Okay, so they have these huge long tunnels, and they have these two beams of energy or particles, and they basically shoot them at each other and let them crash. It's like dropping a television from a skyscraper and examining the pieces after it hit the ground. Believe it or not, such experiments can reveal the smallest particles that make up matter. The image shows the path or trails left behind by these particles, which are called quarks. So this is kind of like the aftermath of one of these huge collisions. So quark is, again, the fundamental subatomic particle. So in other words, the stuff that makes up protons and neutrons. Theoretically, six types of quarks exist, and their existence has been demonstrated experimentally, which is what they showed here. So I added particle colliders were used to smash matter and discover quarks, the things that make up what again? protons and neutrons and we'll continue on the next video link oh and for those of you that are new for chemistry i can only make the videos 15 minutes long so that's why you have to go through a couple videos sometime all right we'll continue in the next one